here I'm, again. My name is Brad Luck, uh, director of SHM and Recreation and Parks. And um, Mark and I are here today to meet with some of you uh, to connect to hear a bit about um, what it is you enjoy about uh, coming to the senior center about and what uh, programs and initiatives you hope will continue moving forward. Um, just as a little background, so everybody is on the same page. Um, Currently, uh, the Essex Area Senior Center is um, is obviously housed here in the city of Essex Junction. Um, Nicole is an employee of the town of Essex, and uh, as many of you probably are aware, the city of Essex Junction and um, is is now the city of Essex Junction is no longer the village and no longer a part of the town of Essex. And uh, there's an agreement that expires on 1231 of this year, um, by which the town and city will officially separate part ways in regards to senior services and um, and so Nicole will no longer um, be operating uh, senior services and activities for the city of Essex Junction and will no longer um, be the director of the Essex Area Senior Center that's in this building um, also what's happening with with the, when that agreement is ending is the city of Essex Junction will no longer have a relationship with the town of Essex for the senior bus service. Um, so that, that van service that's been provided by the town of Essex, uh, I believe the town is going to continue, um, but the city is, not, uh, uh, is a separate municipality and will not uh, have access to that service um, and it will just be a town of Essex service. Uh, and then there's a third thing that's happening, and the, this building uh, needs some, um, some serious renovations. And so um, currently um, the city manager and city council and buildings folks are working on some plans to renovate this building um, so that it can serve the functions of a city and so that it can house all of the offices that are needed uh, to support the city functions and, and um, also allow people to come in into the clerk's office and pay their tax bills and all of those things. Um, so it needs some renovations and those, um, a lot of this is in the works. Um, at some point, this entire building is gonna shut down for those renovations to take place. Um, and so the senior center and the offices and the teen center all will be closed during the time of renovations. And right now it's estimated that the renovations could take six to eight months and the start date is not exactly clear as to when that will begin. Um, January 1 is, is probably unlikely at this point, given that it's almost November 1, um, but estimates have said sometime that those could begin sometime between January 1 and April 1. And so we're, we, the Rec Department, are waiting to hear back from those above us um, when they can get more firm estimates as to when that construction will take place. Um, so during that time, uh, this building will shut down and what Mark and I are here to learn about is what is it that you would like us to continue to, what services, activities, programs would you like us to continue that exist today? I understand that, um, that this duplicate bridge group uh, I think meets here regularly and uh, passionately and probably will want to continue doing that and so it will be uh, on, on on our shoulders to help you all find an alternative space um, during the time of renovations to make sure that you can continue to do that, that activity uh, as well as others. So that's a little bit of background. Um, I'm happy to open it up to questions. Um, does anybody have any? Yes. After the renovations are done, will the senior center come back into this area? Oh, great question. So that, the, her question was, after the renovations are done, will the senior center return to this space? Um, so the intentions are, uh, city council has made it clear that they want uh, a space for seniors and senior programming. And so this space will uh, be available for those activities. I think the one thing that as we're learning um, about best uses of buildings and spaces is I think the one difference will be that there will be opportunities for senior programming and, um, and senior activities in this space, but at times it's not being used for seniors, it will be used for other city functions. Um, and so that could be meeting space, it could be um, outdoor groups that need space. Um, what I, I think, you know, 
many have come to um, understand that currently the way the senior center works is it's just senior center space 24 7 365 and we're just learning that we just don't have the ability to dedicate that space we need uh, we need to bring in other groups have other meeting spaces um, when this space is not being occupied and used for those purposes why we don't have it 24 7 we only have it 10 to 4 well Monday through, Friday. Monday through Friday sorry yeah so the open hours currently are 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday but there's um, there's kind of been an unwritten rule so to speak that after those hours that this this part of the building never really gets utilized. It's it's used very seldom, I would say. It and used so to be. We tried to use it. To and we, yes, we tried we to had, have We had bridge games here in the evening, in the evening. And, and that, and which was wonderful because we we did not have to meet in our homes. And we could we rented at a very rented reasonable house. price. Yeah. Yeah. But we used the space and it was wonderful. And mm -hmm. Brad, just so you're aware, there was a request by um, the Women's Bridge Group to use it, which I did put in for the use of that. It was back when COVID ended. We talked about it when we left the Memorial Hall. Yeah. Um, and I was told no, only because they were concerned about the access to the full building at that time, because you could come into here and you could access the rest of the building. So security wise, until they figured out some other way of doing swipe cards or whatever, maybe it would not be available well i don't think that's the case anymore security might wise. Be different now. um and so I, I don't think you know having those opportunities um I, I don't i don't think those would be problems um i'm just saying that if there are days and times that this room is not being occupied there would there may be other groups utilizing. well of course I, I that makes sense i have a question yeah, i'm confused if this space belongs to the to the city yes why are you from the town this this the no, they're not the the town. They're the city. i'm from the city he's oh, from the city i apologize no problem i, I, that, I told you i was confused yeah it's, <laughs> it's confusing that may, now it makes sense okay. All right. it, <laughs> now it's confusing old people yeah. a bed rim. <laughs> that, no no it, it's very confusing okay. and and forever the the village town relationship has been confusing yeah. the pr the provision of senior services has been confusing so i totally understand any Sorry. confusion right and this space now is used for a like AA meetings and on sundays well. there's an aa group here um yeah so um it's those types of things that i think um historically um there was i think there was just it was typically this was senior space and there's not really much else happening that's not fair brad that's not true no it used no. to be rented it, out it used um, to be rented out there was many different yeah things. there was a decision that was made prior to prior to me coming um with a committee that was here in the land had made the decision to no longer rent for birthday parties and showers because oh, apparently there was one where there was some damage done to a wall or something they were uh, what i was wall. told so at that time this the group that was kind of in charge in terms of the committee decided they did not want to rent out the space anymore. And so when I came in, we just honored that request by the seniors at the time of, we don't want our stuff being used by other people because of wear and tear and stuff like that. So, and I guess that's, that's where, I, I, it sounds like then maybe we're on the same, then then that it makes practical sense. I think I heard you say that, that this space would be utilized for other Absolutely. things. Um, so I break. We're on the same yeah, page. So I thought I was breaking news to yeah. you by saying that, and so if I'm not, then then I'm, that's fantastic. I I just I appreciate that you understand and that other but groups and have needs for space. The difference was that we were in charge, the yes. seniors, so that when it was not being used by the seniors as first dibs, if you will, then it got rented out. Yeah. Yes. So my question is, when this place is open again yeah. after the renovation, will there be someone here in the office every day also to help run and, and maintain times of activities, all that kind of thing? Yeah. Did everybody hear? So the question was, mm -hmm. uh, once the renovations are done, will there be someone in the office to help manage activities and such? So in the in the current fiscal budget. Um, City Council has put in for a program director um, that's a position like Nicole's that's dedicated to serving ad adults 
Um, and so we will have somebody in that capacity. As to some of your other questions, like will somebody be sitting in the office? I, I'm not sure of that, but there will be somebody who is dedicated to supporting the activities and the programs for seniors in the senior center. So does that mean we need to have volunteers to open and close? Uh, that decision is really is really far down the road. We haven't, you know, I understand that right now that's happening on Mondays and Fridays. Um, yeah, I'm, we're just not exactly sure what that will look like in hours and all of those things. I think, you know, we're going to take this opportunity while renovations are happening to make sure we continue at least status quo so you can continue to enjoy the things that you are currently enjoying. And at some point we will bring somebody on and employ them uh, and then they will work with you all on a regular basis to continue to support what, what has been happening, but also to figure out what other wants and needs the community has uh, about seniors and senior programming. Yeah. Well, I spoke with the minister of the Congregational Church here in town, and they will take us whatever day we can, and we agree, we agree with him. Don't know if there will be a price or how much it will be, but they are willing to do it. The hours may not be the same, the day may not be the same every single time, but they're willing to do it. Great. Uh, and it's and close. It's close for parking. It's close for everybody who drives still. And Great. Brad, Brad my question is, uh, if once you reopen and it is maintained by the city, will town residents still be welcome? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I don't think we have any intentions of creating a city-only space. I think... No, you should merge that part together. Well, that's that's beyond <laughs> my pay grade, yeah. But I think you know, for all that we do at the recreation department, um, we things flourish and and are more successful when we allow and invite others from other communities to participate. And so, I, I don't think I don't envision that changing at all. Um, a quick, just um, a question: the way you're talking, it, it seems to be that this will no longer be a senior center. This will be. A recreational space and what the seniors do and what you know X does and Y does and all that they will be competing for the use of the space unless we just choose to go someplace else and then we will but this won't be a senior center anymore the uh, city of Essex will not have um, a senior center no, the, well, the city council has made it clear that they want to continue to support having a senior center. I think I'm just trying to be very transparent right from the start that it, it can't only be a senior center. And we have to have the ability, but it sounds like... So then it's not a senior center, it's a recreational... No, no. No. Well, I, I think, no. No. I think the, the key to continuing to identify it as a senior center is... I think the most important thing is that we continue to prioritize senior and senior programming in this yes, space okay. right. and yes. that and that other things may occur but we That's prioritize okay. the use so it's not going to be in terms First. of your competing like duplicate bridge wants to be here on thursdays and x y or z wants to be here right. thursday which one do we want to do i think it's prioritize senior and senior programming in this space but when it's not being used allow then, other things okay. to occur okay okay but yeah. that was a good clarification thanks yes sir Notwithstanding anything we can do, does the city have a plan for us when the recreation, when the, when the building is being renovated? Uh, in terms of? Space. Space. Yeah. Existing. Oh. Yeah, so that's what we're trying to figure out. So what we're trying to figure out, and we met with Nicole the other day, number one, what is it that we, we need to continue so that this is a seamless transition, so that when this space is not available, we can continue things like this. And so uh, most likely that's not gonna be one location within the city. And it may be that, you know, so we have space at the recreation department, um, there's space at the library. Uh, and then of course we have our community partners. There's First Congregational Church, uh, um, Reverend Ranges was here uh, the other day to talk about the availability of the Holy Family Church in space. Um, so we'll utilize other community partners and spaces to make those things happen. So what we're trying to figure out is what do we need to program and, and then the next step is figure out where. Duplicate bridge. Duplicate bridge, I understand, is pretty important. Top of the list. Uh, of the list. <laughs> <laughs> On Thursdays. It is uh, a fee who's responsible for paying the rent. Uh, 
I, I mean, our go our initial goal is to find spaces that e the city already owns or partnerships where there's there's no fee or it's nominal. Um, but our I think if there is any fee, that's something that the city will pick up. Um, but I just want to caution to say like we're not going into like a commercial space and rehabbing it and 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 you know building it out for six months. We understand that this is a short period of time, and so it it just needs to be some interim solutions. Yeah. Okay, December 31st, last day we possibly could be here, right? January 1 forward, we have no place. What about all the tables? Like that, I'm just, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like bridge. The, uh, the chairs, the tables, the, I don't know, all the stuff we use. The cards. Yeah. No, the cards. So all the cards are ours. We've, we've been using got them. this up all until the they close stuff. down. Yeah, but what happened? Say again. again? We'll be using this facility until you close down for renovations. That's just right. end of December. But, but no, her no, question no. is they don't know when. Right, but her question is once once renovations begin and this this site is closed, this building is closed. What happens to the tables and chairs? That's yeah, why we have to go somewhere else. They, right, they will travel to wherever you're going, and so that's why for us as we're evaluating what are those spaces like. Ideally, we would find a singular space or only two spaces that those activities are happening so that so you, you know share. these tables and chairs can serve multiple purposes exactly. or multiple days right. of cards. For other activities as well. Yeah, we don't want to be moving these to three different locations right. each week. That's so good. that's kind of part of our purview is where where's a place that we can house these so that they can come out when they need to and, and be put away when they're done. Given the calendar right now. Yeah. Um, you're, are you saying it is not firm that uh, you will close this place December 31st? Correct. Okay. How much notice will we get? Uh, I, I, I'm, that's above my, I'm, so we're kind of beholden to, um, so the management team is working with some contractors who are putting together numbers and estimates and, and timelines. And so, when those consultants get back to us and say, okay, here's when we think construction could start and this is a realistic date, we could go out to bid and all those things, then I'll have that info and I'll share it with all of you. But okay, I, I just but, don't have that information. But you have to have a place all set up with another um, locality and all that. Correct. Well, before that. We, I'm assuming we, we, need, we need to have one. Notice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. So, so right now, if, if and again, a January one timeline is is really tight, not, not so narrow. it's probably far fetched. But I'm I'm putting it out there in case somehow somebody tells me it is January one. Um, but again, that's what our role is, right? Our role is to be prepared, and so that's why we're learning about what's important, the days, the times, the places, the the furniture, and then we'll find appropriate spaces. I, and I understand that's frustrating because I don't have an answer. I can't tell you. Look, yeah, no. if it's the week, if it's the week of January first. Here's where you're going to be. I don't have that information for you today. That's works, something. That's, works spaces now. that's right. We're, we're now that we have some of the parameters and days and times. We're exploring. We have a, we have a short list that we're working off from, um, but we're working through that. Yes. Sir. Um, upon reopening, could 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 this be seen as, as perhaps a positive for this group in that now the restricted like um, ten to four. After that, there will be evening availability as well. Yeah, I, I always try and look at things positively, so I appreciate that perspective. Um, I think this is an opportunity, right? And so, if this place is going to be shut down, um, you know, I think there's some opportunity to um, to possibly do some renovating, to do some painting, to uh, spruce things up, to you know, to, and and to come back to uh, you know a new space that's been renovated, um, bathrooms, that kind of stuff, um, as well as to maybe reframe and rethink about programming opportunities and if, if Evening Bridge is something that was declined previously to explore those things again. So um, I think there's lots of opportunity in, in reopening and reimagining. Yes. Yes, when this place is renovated and the seniors come back, will we be uh, guaranteed to have this place from 10 to four? Because before, I don't know, a year or two ago, uh, somebody wanted to have us here from like nine and one in the morning and have it in the afternoon for daycare. So will we be guaranteed to keep this place like we have now, ten to four? Um, I don't think I could guarantee hours and those types of things. What I what I think the 
I would continue to say is that we'll prioritize senior programming and activities uh, in this space. Um, but I don't think like today I could commit to you that in 12 months when this place reopens, if that's the timeline, that will be open 10 to four on these days. That, that's something that will evolve and a, and a new person that's hired will evaluate and, and make happen. We, we wanna be supportive and, and have the space and activities that you want, um, but I, I just, that's a little bit over prescriptive for what I can say well, today. Most of us don't wanna have our programs like in nine in the morning to one in the afternoon that was proposed, you know, uh, one or two years ago. Sure, I, you know, I, I think again, prioritizing seniors is is the key so if do du if duplicate bridge likes to meet from 12 to 2 or whatever or whatever your time is mm -hmm. that that's when that happens okay. as to whether or not the center is open from 10 to 4 you know I think that's where we need to find the happy medium and I just I'm not sure where that when, will land when you're hiring a new <laughs> the person who is going to be dedicated to senior uh, events and yep. senior activities is that what it means because Nicole has not been a full-time you know she, she's had other responsibilities for parks and recreation and, which is why this was not covered all the time and, and programs have been limited because the director has not had time to really create programs for the senior so is this it, it, person it is going to be dedicated to senior yes they are they are dedicated i think the only piece that was in there like will they do other things they may i mean that's kind of the nature of recreation and as professionals what we do you know we have somebody who works on sports and fitness and somebody who works in community recreation but we do all sorts of different things but this we have a program director community recreation a program director sports and fitness this will be a program director. I'm not sure if we're going to call it senior uh, activities or adult activities. Oh, uh, right now, it's it's been phrased as adult. Difference. I know, um, but is, that that is their that is their direction. I know. Okay. Yes. Okay. So now I have two questions. Um, I would be very happy to have space here for Mahjong. If we go elsewhere. Do all those mahjong sets stay here, or are we allowed to take like two of them? Because there's five sets. Yeah, we can. I mean, again, it, it's our goal is to be as seamless as possible. So if mahjong wants to continue on certain days, and and we need certain tables, chairs, equipment, supplies, that the goal is to have all of those things available. Okay, now I forgot my second question. <laughs> <laughs> You'll remember later. Um, oh, I know what it is. <laughs> yes. So, the, the phrase adult programming, yeah. that can mean anywhere from 18 yeah. to right. us. That's what it says. So, so I myself don't want to be here with young people. Yeah. I want to be here with us. Um, so, will there be any differentiation at times? Yeah, so Mark, Mark and I were recently at, at the Vermont Parks and Rec Conference and in the National Conference. So there's this there's this debate that happens throughout society and not only here but everywhere, right? Like, what do we call these people? Uh, because adults, adults, it, it implicates 18 plus. You will grow into one of those persons. <laughs> <laughs> then let us know there's, what you think. Uh, some people are, are honored to be called seniors and, yes. and you're calling a spade a spade you've done your time you've earned your keep yep. and so you're a senior and some people that's i don't want to don't call me a senior i i'm i'm fit i'm athletic i'm i'm a grandparent i'm retired I, I i run i walk i drive like don't call me a senior that, that's offensive so you when know, i say I that i don't know anybody that thinks that I well know. I, there you know are. There, there are and so yeah. when I say that I'm just trying to be conscientious about those different feelings about that so I'm not I'm not using adult to exclude seniors and I'm not doing it to include 18 to 50 year olds okay. but I am trying to be conscientious that that there's a um, an older adult population 
uh, some people call it active adults, um, and trying to, to make sure that we're using language that um, is appropriate and inviting to, to people who maybe come here now, but also there's a lot of people in our community who don't currently utilize the senior programming that happens or the senior center. And so I think we need to think about how to engage and work with those people too and figure out what those needs are. So yes. to add to that, also adult, adult can also mean, um, I, I work with special ed for 16 years. I have nothing against special ed, but I don't want to play cards with them. With that, does that include disabled? No. I mean, mentally disabled. Do, do we include them? Yes, we're inclusive of all. Okay, because I don't want to play cards. I've worked with them for a lot of years, and I don't want to play cards. Uh, well, well, certainly um, but, that would be a personal choice, but we, right. would, we would not right. exclude them. Okay, so the last thing is, so basically what you're telling us, we would have this space for like part-time, because other things will be scheduled also for for other kinds of things. No, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm, and I know this is tricky. I'm, I'm just trying to be clear. I, I don't want to promise you today that in a year from now, this, the center hours will be exactly the same. Um, I'm, just, I'm not sure of that. I think senior programming and, and activities will be the priority and the needs and wants. And if the need and want is for people, my, my understanding in meeting with Nicole yesterday is that the vast majority, if not 99% of the people that come to this center currently are coming for a specific program or activity and are not utilizing currently it as a drop-in place to come and socialize. Now, so, so for me to, if, I, if, I, if that's the same in a year, I'm not sure if it makes the most sense to be open from 10 to four if people are only here from 11 to one and then go home. So those are the kinds of things we'll need to assess. But we also may want to keep it open from one to four to encourage that kind of drop-in activity yeah. and create yeah. social yeah. opportunities. So I have regular hours. I, like you yes. said, I work with special education for a lot of years. And I have nothing against them. I still work with a couple of them. Yeah. But I don't want my leisure time. I mean, to me, that's work. That's I don't still want personal. it. That's, that's personal. personal. That's, that's personal. personal. That's Your fine. You guys have a lot of personal stuff too. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so my question, Brad, if we go back to the person that is going to be hired, and, and everyone has mentioned after we return, well, we have like a six or eight month interim that we're yeah. going to be in limbo at Holy Family at Rec Department. Do we have somebody who is going to oversee the senior at that point in time? And to go back to add to this drop in three, four years ago, yeah. this was a major drop in place yeah. with 300 plus seniors yeah. as members. Yeah. So that can happen again if we have open doors, if we are able to have somebody who isn't torn between three to five and different things mm -hmm. who can be here. And so are we first of all going to have somebody who oversees us <coughs> for six to eight months as you put us wherever you're going to put us and i assume you are going to place us correct okay uh that's that's what we're sorting out so i don't have that i can't tell you like this is the name on it this here's who you call no, it right I don't, now i don't care about the name yeah, are yeah. you going to have someone Will there be a senior director? It may be someone or or add an S someones. Um, that's what we're trying to figure out is what is it that we, what is the total load of programming that we need to support and, and then how can we best accomplish that? And can that be done with some of our existing staff? Can that be done with a part-time person? When do we hire the full-time person? You know, that's what we're trying to figure out. And, and part of that equation, Donna, is, it, you know, if this place is shut down from April until October of 2024, I need to assess, does it make the most sense for us to hire somebody full time when we don't have a space to offer new activities or have a drop in space or, or those kinds of things? And we're, and we're only supporting kind of those existing things. So that those are the kinds of criteria that we're evaluating, like when's it the most appropriate juncture to bring somebody in? We understand that we're gonna lose the services of the current director effective January 1. I'm just not 100% sure that 
having somebody else start full time on January 1, knowing this building is going to shut down for six to eight months makes the most sense. Yes. I think you've been very clear, and I think most of the remaining questions would just uh, dive into conjecture. Yep. You know, I mean, you're still developing these ideas and everything. Yep. Um, do you feel any differently now after speaking to us about anything? Uh, I, I feel actually pretty good. I, I feel like, you know, for the most part from the nods or some of the comments that we're all relatively on the same page. Um, not exactly. Uh, all the time, but in terms of you know what things will look like in this interim period, what things will look like when we get back, the expectations of having somebody who's hired and, and paid full time, dedicated to serving you all, the the idea of uh, prioritizing seniors uh, in this space once we return, the opportunities that are coming from the ability to renovate this place and maybe have it look a little bit different and painted and and freshened up for when you return. Um, you know, I, I feel pretty good about our ability also to make sure that you have these tables and can continue your bridge and those kinds of things. Um, I think that's what we're going to work on is those, I think what everybody wants now is those details, right? Like, when is this going to be shut down? Give me a date. When, where is Duplicate Bridge going to be on Thursdays? Give me a place. Um, and so that's kind of, that's what, where, who do I contact for when I have questions about mm -hmm. senior programs and that kind of stuff. When, so when this place does <coughs> shut down and, and I, <coughs> see what Donna was saying is who will be in charge will there be somebody or it just seems to be more important to have somebody in charge when of the diaspora when we have no place or we are shuffled off to someplace else temporarily who do we talk to who is in charge of opening the door or buy toilet paper no. Yeah, yeah. All, all that well, stuff. again, it it's somewhere. that interim period, so that rule changes, right? There's no toilet paper that needs to be, I mean, it depends where we are, yeah, but right. like, we're not buying toilet paper for this no, building, right? I don't really mean that. I mean, <laughs> but if anybody has questions, uh, yes. you know, is there, it going to be We open? will provide you with that information. I don't have that information today. Again, until yesterday, I didn't understand exactly what was going on here, so Nicole was able to fill us in. Um, so now we have numbers and, and days and times and all that stuff, so we can start to fill in those gaps. But yes, at some point, we will provide you with that name and number. We're just not exactly sure who that's gonna be. I'm sorry, did you have a question? No. Okay. Okay, we're also hoping that you are going to contact the council and revisit the decision by the city not to accept the town's proposal to continue the vans because that is a big issue. And we would like to have our seniors that live in the city included in van service. We don't want them excluded. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Very, that's very meaningful. Yeah, and, and so I'm sorry, I forget the exact start of your question. So what, what I'll be doing with this information is um, compiling it into council. a summary, into a report that will go exactly. to the city manager and the city council. Um, I, it won't be a com incumbent upon me to go and challenge the city council's decision to not continue busing. What I can share is the feedback that I heard more, more so on Tuesday, not so much today, about right. the concerns about the discontinued um, bus service. So, so you said, what did you suggest yesterday to us? Well, Tuesday. How how can we go and present it to the council? We're not on the agenda. Yeah. So just for there were some folks that were here Tuesday and some who weren't. So just so everybody's aware, um, there was uh, more concern, I would say, or more people voiced concern on Tuesday about. Mm -hmm. um, about the fact that the senior bus service with the town of Essex is, is ending and about what transportation options they will have. Um, and so that is something that, that's in the budget and the budget is decided by the city council um, and they did not budget to continue that van service after January 1st. And so the way that democracy works is that if you all uh, have a concern about that and would would prefer to have that service or some other service. I think the, I think what's important to get to, Donna, is what is it that you really want? And is it that you really want transportation for 60 plus? Um, then the town of Essex
Essex, uh, senior van service is it may be an option. As to, you know, we're not sure whether or not they would they would continue to offer that, but there may be other options to explore. So I think just to be really clear with the council as to what it is you're hoping <coughs> to to gain. Um, but city council is where that concern would, would need to be taken to. Um, and so you could do that by attending a meeting. They meet on the second and fourth uh, Wednesdays of the month at 6.30. Um, and at the start of the meeting, you can speak on an item that's not on the agenda. Um, but also if, if it's something that people felt passionately about and contacted the city manager, uh, it could potentially be at a, an agenda item at some point where the city council discusses it and people from the public can comment on it um, as to if they support it or don't support it. So I guess the long, the short of all that, Donna, is if people are concerned about that decision, um, contacting the city manager or the city council would be the appropriate avenues to, to voice that concern. Okay. Yes. Uh, as of January 1st, since you haven't started the renovation, can we still be here yeah. on Thursdays in January? Unless we're told no. Unless we're told no, yeah. So at once we have that hard date of this is the date that everybody needs to vacate the building, until that time, we will continue to operate things here just as normal. Um, I'm just saying, I don't know. Somebody could tell us it's January 1. It seems highly unlikely because of how close it is, but it, it's possible. But as of January 1, we will not have Nicole or anyone here. That's correct. To Open the, open the doors yeah. to take care of the space, turn the heat on. Yeah, we'll need the code. We well, need the code to right. open the doors. Nicole will no longer be right. doing that. Right. So, so it will be incumbent upon the right. Essex Junction Recreation and Parks to make sure that happens. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Because there are always people here who come in. We have luncheons. We have, yeah. you know, <laughs> vegetable, all kinds of things happen. And yeah. to not have anybody here in charge of it is... Who would be the contact to for maintenance for if a problem arises or whatever? Well, whoever, there'll be somebody. The manager is. Yeah, it, will be, it will be whoever will be. But Nicole, Nicole is not here. There will be another well, there'll Nicole. be someone. There'll right. be someone. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> not hired full time. Okay. Just out of curiosity, how many people are city residents live in the city? Two, three, four, five. I'm here too. Seven, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and how many people are town residents? Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And how many people are from not the city or the town? I used to be. Okay. I just moved in, but I mean, I was oh. always, and there okay. were any number Great. of people from Colchester who used to use this. Yeah. So. Because of the services here, they pull from all around. I mean, seniors uh, need. We have somebody in South activities. Burlington. Yeah. Now, South Burlington has a really good senior center. Who are you from Burlington? And um, in terms of, you know, this will just be our last question. Um, so what we've captured or in the, our discussion with Nicole was that um, Mondays and Fridays, there's a group that plays Mahjong from 10 to noon. And I'm just speaking about things that are important to continue to provide space for once this space isn't available. Uh, Tuesdays, bingo from 10 to one. Um, and then Thursdays, maybe a hand and foot group maybe a briscola group but definitely a duplicate bridge group mm -hmm. 1230 to 4. the duplicate bridge is 1230 to 4. yep briscola is 11 to 12. what was that briscola is 11 to 12. when we went when there was somebody here we had a library group we had oh, uh, yeah. yoga, exercise group, and a book club, a knitting group. Knitting group, yeah. And, and, and so there were there were people using yeah. this pretty consistently from morning until afternoon. Yeah. Right? Oh, we had people and the meals lunch. Right. and lunch. And <laughs> we had, yeah, we had lunch. Yeah, we had so. a lot of the groups that are not happening today is because we lost those two groups. Yeah. yeah. 
yes, yes, seated, like, yes. The seated yoga is still taking place. Like a lot of those are still taking place in the exists, just not here anymore because you don't have the right. the world. Yeah. Yeah. The losing the library and the area in the back was a big hit. Yeah. 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 Okay, anything else? All right, well, thanks for taking the time and thanks for sharing your Thank questions you. and concerns. Thank you. And, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. We'll look forward to continue to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, and I just don't know when, but yeah, once we have, like, okay. here's what construction is, here's the plan for where these rooms are going to go. Yes. So it was very, it was very different on much. Yes.